I wanted to play some more clips of the DNC. Here we're going to see um, a woman uh, in a hijab who's um, lightly kind of, but still significant, hit on the head by a uh, delegate. She's a protester and uh, she's a, you know, protesting about Palestine. And let's see how this delegate responds. It's hard to make out, but if you go back to the... the the beginning, Brad, just so people can watch, you're going to see it's it's a guy hitting a woman who's wearing hijab, hitting her on the head with a sign. Let's just watch it again, the couple opening. The There's the Democrats. Um, that's a delegate. And then let's show another clip. So these are people, as it says at the beginning, I'm just going to, uh, these are people who were told, um, the NC crowd told to raise Joe Biden's signs to obscure Stop Arming Israel banner. And someone grabs the sign, the Palestine sign. Security, security person grabs the sign. This doesn't even look that bad after after seeing someone hit with the with the with the sign. Uh, as Hannah points out, yeah, democracy in action. But um, I mean, going back to the first um, clip of the of the guy hitting the woman with the sign, can you imagine if someone with a yarmulke had that happen to them with the protest sign? Like the articles, the headlines about anti-Semitism, about Jewish safety. And I I only saw this on Twitter. I didn't see a Newsweek piece on this. Yeah. Um, there there would be like a meltdown yeah. <laughs> in the media and the DNC would be scrambled up. They'll <laughs> Right. Yeah. So that's how they deal with it. Like either hitting someone or covering it up. Like what a metaphor, literally covering up protest with uh, like covering up the truth with Joe Biden signs. Um, the, and then the guy a... who uh, like was at the at the helm of this genocide still is <laughs> and then right uh like the girl who said she was stabbed in the eye she got on pierce morgan so pierce morgan hey if you're watching i know you love the show please have that woman uh who was wearing the hijab who was hit on the head uh mm -hmm. by a sign make sure you have her on on your show it's uh, i mean yeah it's it's uh how do you stay in, like what keeps you engaged given this like are you ever tempted to just disengage and and say it's too painful nothing it's pointless like what what keeps you going back to things like the dnc or protesting congress or is it the fact that it's so horrific that like you have no other choice but to do something that's kind of i mean i the only time i feel any sort of peace is too strong a word where you know i i feel any sort of uh, maybe respite from the onslaught of, of horrific news and, and you know, f forget trying to grieve anything. Palestinians aren't given the, the luxury of grieving. Uh, and the, if it's, it's when there's a lull between like a, a protest or some sort of action or that's when I really feel at my worst because I, you know, I have deprioritized almost everything else in my life sometimes to my friends would say to extreme an extent because i think that's what it takes i i i don't understand how people 
how that hasn't been like a common sense mass thing to do. I mean, I always remember uh, Rachel Corey said this in, a, in an email to her mom uh, in 2003. She said, I don't, uh, I think everyone, I think it's a good idea for everyone to drop everything and try to stop this yeah. in 2003. Right. And I will echo that statement. I mean, it's, there's, you, you got to do what you can. And this is why I try, it's, it's like coming into this interview, it's hard to talk about like the, the illusion of electoralism leading us anywhere, especially with Palestine without maybe coming off as defeatist. But I think it's quite the, the contrary. I, I think the, the first step to really, understanding what we're dealing with is realizing that this electoral idea, especially in this country is it's a facade. I mean, it's, it's you, you all U S politics have been captured by segments of the U S ruling class. They happen to compete on things, but it's all been captured by the ruling class. And anytime like having any sort of long-term movement that turns into power that in, in electorally is almost impossible. And I, and I don't have the answer for, for how to combat this, honestly, but they just co-opt it. They, they co-opt movements and, and they absorb the pressure and then they use their impeccable propaganda machine. I mean, ridiculously well-structured evil propaganda machine, like, you know, J the Jake Tapper types and the Dana Bash types who will go, you know, they're like uh, celebrities in, in the public eye of, you know, your, your median American and they'll come out and just justify yeah. and spout like Zionist talking points and people listen to them and they believe it. Right. And, big, and, big, and the rape, big uh, propagators of the rape hoax, the Hamas rape hoax. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and, and of I course, nothing about... about this, right? The actual documented rape. 